uh, borrow or what you said, what you would call it, borrow from you or steal from you because we just had this conversation with Billy and he was saying that he would see certain things that were similar to things that he has done. Do you address those people or those things or do you just let it go and it's just charge it to the game? Well, it, when it initially happened to me, it, it, it crushed me just because um, the comedian was already bigger and more famous than me. And he took my clothes and joke and made it his clothes and joke on Kings of Comedy. Uh, the reason it hit, hit so bad was that I was in the theater. I paid my money to go see Kings of Comedy and um, to see my joke being there and not me. Um, was about as disrespectful as it gets in our craft. And um, I really took it really personally with Cedric the Entertainer at that time. Now, since then, I've done enough work with 10 comedy specials. Um, you either have to write your own jokes or you're telling a variation of my joke, whether you acknowledge it or not. Um, and so um, I, I care less. I, I just... Um, it's a little sad, sad, and you know what I'm saying? You, it, it's different when you have artists that sing a cover song and don't acknowledge who. Daddy. So Sinead O'Connor has this whole thing where she talks about the terrible experience she had with Prince. But right. in honesty, what happened was he wrote her the song. And then when she goes to do interviews, she's talking in the interviews about what motivated the song and what was behind the song. You didn't write the song. Right. <laughs> say what it meant or how it came about. And he don't cuss and she on the interviews cussing and it was just weird. And then, uh, but as artists, we have to understand that it either goes one or two ways. Either you are originally creating or you are borrowing bits and pieces. And um, the only problem is a lot of these comics they only got famous in the pandemic. They just got hot. And a lot of them ain't gonna make it out the pandemic. But nah. there's no there there. And mm -hmm. part of legendary status is the amount of hurdles you make it over. You saying, oh, I didn't have to make no hurdles. I, I've been running track. I ain't hit a hurdle yet. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that ain't how that go at all, bro. And, and you know what's, what's crazy, Kat? What you saying and about that, about Cedric is like, did you ever get a chance to address him about that and him to clear it up with you and make that right? I'm not that type of comedian. I'm going in your mouth where the joke is when you steal my jokes. And I have a reputation in this industry that if you steal my joke, you're going to be missing a two for two. I don't feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do know that it does happen in our industry and that in other industries there is recompense for if you steal a person's um, life work. Uh, and in ours, it's kind of the wild, wild west where people feel like they can do whatever they want to do. But, you know, you have to you have to call it out uh, when it happens and address it as it happens. But it's not a good thing for our business. But um, once we allowed people to not write their own stuff and once we started acting like other people could write it for you and once we started acting like once we start pretending that those things that that those things exist in comedy, they don't. They don't. It's a personal business. It's about you. And it's about you sharing that with your audience. So the comics that still, they're, they're funny for the moment, but um, <laughs> there's no there there. For those right jokes, we understand as soon as you wrote one, you immediately started working on the right next on. one. 